け翼 Welcome to another episode of Ike Tsubasa. I'm your host, Chrono Cloud. And if you thought like me that just because anniversary was over, the rate of paid characters would slow down, well, Caleb has some news for you. They decided to introduce an all new paid character, one from the Rising Sun saga that they somehow conveniently forgot to include in the German banner. So, is he any good? Let's find out together. Ike! Manfred Margus, Lofty Giant Tower, is a toughness type forward that plays for the Rising Sun German team. He is known for his dependable post plays, not only to score, but also knocking high balls down to Schneider and Schuster up front. Marcus comes with a very fitting passive, Enhance Special Skills High Flying, granting all high flying special shots an extra 20% force. He comes with a 4% bond that requires three or more toughness type non-Japanese players, which means he will easily fit into a German based team like a glove. If you're already running SDF Müller, Kevin Schmidt, and the Dreamfest Chester, then Margus is a no brainer. Will to win when inferior is a nice touch that improves Margus's stats by 7% when behind in the score. High ball request means Margus has an 80% chance to receive a high ball while in the box. And most importantly, skill block cancel ensures that he will be able to use his strongest header against skill blockers. Both abilities blend really well with his passive, making Margus an effective target man in the box. Margus's stat allocation is typical for him, with higher shot and power, and the rest are not impressive, except for his 7k pass being decent. He gets up to 25% bonus for all his high ball actions, as he is very good with high balls. Our suggested limit break should be sufficient for Margus to perform, and boundary breaking him has very little value, as Margus can't really do anything else well and he doesn't need the extra skill slots as he comes with skill block cancel. Marcus's shot is just shy of 15k, and his header is over 18k with our suggested limit break. As for skill force, we've included his passive for all high flying shots, and recommended skills are marked with a star. The higher figure includes a 7% stat bonus from will to win with inferior. Marcus is already quite unstoppable with his header, breaking the 100k mark, and becomes even more deadly if his team falls behind. We decided to drop Marcus a volley and a pass, as there is a 20% chance that he will receive a low ball. He won't threaten with his volley, but having it will force defenders to commit special skills. In fact, most of the recommended skills are there for the same mentioned purpose. Lastly, we feel that it might be useful for him to have a tackle. This might sound odd as he probably will never tackle anyone successfully, but the reason for it is to remove the pressure from Chester when defending. Marcus is usually a prime target for matchups, and if you still aren't aware, Chester's pressure can only be removed by using special skills. Margus is once again a one-trick battering ram that has a high chance to score against any meta goalkeeper, especially when he gets a hotline boost from the likes of Raval. Another thing to note is that Margus enables the 1-2 for both Schneider and Schuster. That completes Schneider's offensive options and makes him even more dangerous. And now for Chrono Cloud's Corner. I'd like to take a moment to talk about debuff teams with you guys. You see, a lot of people like to say that the era of the debuff teams is over now, but I'd actually argue that they're just about to begin. You see, originally K-Lab's plan was to introduce three team types, a buff type, a debuff type, 
and a monocolor type that had high shields. The problem was that everyone absolutely hated the monocolor idea for the anniversary and it was quickly shelved. The problem there, though, is that all the debuff players that K-Lab apparently had in the pipeline were still introduced. It's absolutely possible to build a 40% debuff team while still maintaining bonds in the high 20s. Now, is everyone going to have that one? No, probably not. But it is absolutely doable to build a debuff team in the uh, mid 30s. Conversely, it's quite difficult to build a team with both high bonds and shields. The most that I can personally build for myself is a 23% shield team while maintaining 38% bonds. What I'm trying to get across to you guys is there's a very large gap here. And those people that have managed to collect debuff characters are about to take us all for a ride because it's very difficult to win a matchup when the gap between your shields and their debuffs is 20%. I'm not quite sure what K-Lab's solution to this is going to be, but uh, one option is to release even higher shield characters, characters with a 5% or higher shield. I don't know if any are actually in the pipeline, we'll have to see, but mark my words, the debuff domination is coming. On behalf of E.K. Tsubasa, I would like to thank all our members on Patreon and YouTube. Your support is very much appreciated, and it motivates us. It's also one of the reasons why we've been working tirelessly to keep the channel running and making videos for everyone. All right, guys, do check out ways to support us, or at least take a look. Links provided in the video description. Check out our other videos listed here by YouTube. Subscribe. And if you haven't, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have a good time and may the gotcha gods bless us all. Until next time, I've been your host, Chrono Cloud. Ike!